full time here at Semple Stadium in the Munster quarter final where it has ended Clare 122 Waterford 21 points watching the game for off the ball today was Jamesy O'Connor Jamesy a happy man to see your county through today very happy though yeah um Listen, emphatic win really to be honest about it. Uh, you know, one thirteen to seven points at half time, thirteen, I think first half wide, so we should have been out of sight. Credit to Watford, I think they outscored us nine four in the last quarter. Um, but really and truly the game was was, was one a long way out. And um just delighted for Brian and the lads, they worked very hard and as I said they were full value for the win. Where was the template set for this win today, James? Like obviously the first half was fantastic from Clare's point of view, but was it up front with Tony Kelly or was it more so in the backs with John Conlon where this win came from? I, th I think a combination of things Dahi. I mean you know tactically I think Clare won the battle because Caelan Lyons was earmarked to pick up uh, Tony Kelly. Clare sided Tony at, at corner forward uh, in a two-man foot forward line with Aaron Shanahan and if, if anything it took Lyons out of the game given the momentum and the impetus uh, you know and the ability to break tackles and drive forward that he normally gives him from, from his right half back position so uh, Tony was you know, got plenty of good ball as well, and, and, and I suppose look at Lyons did relatively well on him, but uh, you were robbing Peter to pay to pay Paul. And I think at the other end, I mean, Clare just won the midfield battle hands down. I thought Colin Malone uh, and Colin Galvin were both excellent. And uh, the Clare half back line with John Conlon imperious at centre back in a kind of a free sweeping role. Um, th that's really where the platform the platform was laid. And I mean, Desi Hutchinson, you know, starved of possession all day. Shane Bennett again got very very little good quality ball to, to ask any questions of the Clare full back line and. Outside of Stephen Bennett, um, you know none of the starting six wards for forward score from score from play. So, yeah, Clare, I think tactically, um, you know, won that battle and, and, and dominated possession in the middle third, especially in the first half. From a water po Waterford point of view, as you as you said, nothing was really happening for them there today. Now they made a, a fight of it at the end, but for you, how disappointed were you in terms of their attack play? as to not really offering too much, but maybe it's a case of how well maybe Clare were defending. Yeah, and I suppose listen, you know, you have to reference as well the fact that look at Stephen O'Keefe retired. You know, he's a leader in that dressing room, hugely experienced, great distributor, tied to work obviously. You know, they knew from a long way out that they weren't going to have him. But to lose Conor Prunty and Jamie Barron as well, I mean, that's effectively from last year, your one, three, six and eight, which is almost the entire spine of your team. So, you know, we maybe underestimated as well the importance of Jamie Barron because you know, I suppose he gives him that energy, he stitches the play together so well, um, as I said, gets forward, breaks tackles, and uh, he was man of the match in the corresponding fixture last last season in the championship. So, you know, those guys obviously were, were you know, big, big boots to fill, and the players that came in just didn't seem to be able to fill them this afternoon. So, um, yeah, back to the drawing board from Liam Cahill, and they have a job now to pick themselves up ahead of the qualifiers. What will they have to do, James, do you think, to turn around? Is it a case of when Jamie Barron comes back into the team, if he comes back fully fit, that that will be a major game changer for Waterford into the qualifiers? Yeah, well, look, they need Jamie Barron on the pitch and they need Conor Prunty as well. Um, you know, obviously, if Prunty is full back, it releases lines to the half back line and maybe it releases Austin Gleeson further up the, up, up the field. Um, you know, if, if Jamie Barron is fit to come in, um, you know, you, you get maybe a lot more off the bench from Darrell Lyons than what he contributed from, from the starting. Uh, from starting today where the game really just seemed to pass him passing by so um but you're still down to Burka obviously and you're, and you're still down to Stephen O'Keefe O'Keefe although Billy Nolan did, did did well today you know no 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 fall can be laid at his um at his door but look at after a defeat like this Dahi it's it's really just soul searching it's you know I suppose taking a good long hard look at yourselves both players and management to like and um and, and and you know just making sure that look at when, the, when, when the, they get back on the pitch in the qualifiers and um, that they give a better count to themselves than they did today and they'll be bitterly disappointed because that wasn't the Watford we saw last year and, and, and the Watford players and management know that um they're better than that but as I said credit to, to Clare they just didn't allow them or give them the platform to from which to play today as a Clare supporter what will annoy you there now today? A great performance, but what will you be looking for from Clare to improve on against Tipperary now next weekend? Yeah, well, I suppose this is just a wide count. I mean, anytime it's in double digits, Dahi, you're, you know, you're, you're, you may pay the price for it. And certainly against Tipperary, we can't afford to be as inefficient as we as we were. Um, you know, 13 wides at the half time. The wide count in total, I think, was over was over 20. Um, look, look. At, the fact is, we had 42 or 43 shots on goal. That's a positive. But we're going to have to take a higher percentage and be more efficient um, next weekend. Outside of that though I mean we didn't really cough up a goal chance we looked really solid at the at the back um, you know Dermot Ryan and Aidan McCarthy have you know carried that league form um, into the championship which was which was great and John Conan obviously 
was man of the match today in my mind. I mean, he was he was outstanding at centre back, and that's obviously validates Brian um, and the decision the management the management made. So, um, listen, Clare will know that there's a bigger test, and uh, and Tipperary will have a, taken a good long hard look at Clare today and and devise ways and strategies obviously to stop them. But certainly, it's it's great to have that game uh, to be looking forward to next week. Leadership is something maybe me myself m myself I was looking clear in terms of their players what leaders were there would they stand up today personally myself I saw it there especially from John Conlon I thought he was exceptional as you said but others le other leaders standing up I thought Aidan McCarthy another player you pointed out brilliant Colm Galvin in midfield for you I know you were on a fantastic Clare team with so many leaders, but looking at this Clare team today, how, is it, how important is it now to develop leaders along with the, the skill and athleticism that they have? Yeah, well, let's just listen, you know, Avery Quilligan and Rory Hayes were, were two of our younger players and, and they were nominated for All-Stars last year. Um, you know, so you know, it's up to those guys now to, to carry that, that, as I said, that form and that, that responsibility on. And I thought they, they both played well. I mentioned Jeremy Ryan, Ed McCarthy, I thought those guys were excellent. But, um, you know, the, the guys that are still there from 2013, you know, John Conlon, um, I thought Tony again, you know, one twelve five from play today. And Galvin, you know, people don't appreciate how good that guy is. You know, he's a big game player and having him back and John back, obviously, and David Reedy, who didn't play last year, um, you know, I felt that that was going to help us to close the gap, uh, the gap with Waterford. So, you know, Connor Cleary at full back as well, you know, strong character, um, experienced, didn't do too much wrong today either. So, look at leadership all over the field and, and, and guys taking responsibility, and we're going to need that against Tipperary, as I said, in seven days' time. A big talking point throughout the league was the officiation of games for you. How do you feel that was managed there today? Yeah, I think this is quite nice. I think that by and large did a good job. Um, but I saw in the, in, in the Kenny match, the Kenny Clare match in the last round of the league, that I think Johnny Murphy did a really good job again. And I think, to be fair to the referees, I mean, you know, they didn't want to be making headlines for the wrong reasons, or they didn't want to feel that, you know, they were the root cause of maybe the stop start or um, maybe some of the criticisms that have been levelled at the at the game. And I think it was going to take time for everybody to get get back to the the level um, that Championship hurling is played at. And I think. I think by and large the referee had a, had a, had a good game today and um, hopefully that bodes well for the championship ahead. And we had 200 supporters in the ground today. For you personally, did you feel you could hear them enough? Did the players maybe feel they were around? What sort of atmosphere do you feel we got there today? Yeah, well listen, it's certainly better than, than what we were, you know, what we experienced last November um, and, and December. I mean, I think Liverpool Cork is a test game that's going to be Saturday night, so there'll be a good 3,000 in, in Torres and both county boards will have a job trying to dish out those tickets given the, the demand that's there and the massive um, appetite amongst the public for hurling matches and big championship matches. So good to see, you know, s some supporters back. It'd be better to see, as I said, some more in Torres next Saturday night. And uh, hopefully, you know, by the latter stages of the championship, we'll be returning to, to some degree of normality and, and, you know, we'll see bigger crowds getting to the, getting to the games. But, uh, yeah, it certainly whetted our appetite for the people that were there today and um, that hopefully they can see more of those games before the summer ends.